Hey all, welcome to Alicat Customs. Today I'm doing a full tear down on this 10 bolt, getting ready for a full build to go in this uh, 2000 Chevrolet Silverado. So y'all stick around. All right, y'all, so I'm in the middle of a full build on this 2000 Chevrolet Silverado, and one of the key components is doing a full build on this rear axle. This is a 8.6 uh, GM 10 bolt that came out of this 2000 Chevrolet Silverado, and what I'm gonna be doing to it is gonna be changing the axle gears, installing a set of C-clip limiter shafts, I'm gonna be narrowing the axle and also replacing all the bracketry uh, to go with the suspension upgrades on the truck. Um, before I do that, I wanna talk about a couple different things about this axle and uh, what this video is gonna uh, lead into as far as building this whole axle. All right, so first off, why are we building this 10 bolt versus upgrading to a Ford nine inch or something like that? Well, it, there's a couple reasons in that. First, he already owns this 10 bolt and it already has a, a couple parts on it that are upgraded, uh, which helps uh, knock the cost down of building the axle from here versus trying to source a Ford nine inch and also build the axle. Uh, so the return on investment of, of upgrading to the Ford nine inch uh, isn't really there for him. And yes, the Ford nine inch is a much better axle. Also the, uh, the Ford 8.8 axle, both of those are really good axles, um, but the cost difference of having to source those axles versus build this axle uh, is not really there. Uh, plus um, a 8.6 10 bolt like this can really handle what we're going to throw at this truck um, pretty well with some upgrades. Uh, so it's not really a, a good return on investment um, to scrap this axle and, and go to a Ford nine inch. Uh, so what we're doing is uh, installing a new set of gears in this axle, as well as doing some C-clip limit, uh, limiter shafts. And on a, like on a Ford nine inch, uh, you will have to buy, you may have to buy different axle shafts, uh, if you're, especially if you're gonna to upgrade to a, a higher axle shaft and all that kind of stuff. But like I, say, like I said earlier, the cost difference of going to that, um, this truck is, is, is gonna run, the goal is to try to get it to run a, a low 10. Um, if we run a, a 999 on, the, on, on a quarter mile, um, Ch Chandler would be super excited about that. And this axle, once we get done with it, we can handle that. So stepping up and, and up, uh, upgrading to a four nine inch just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we're gonna be building this 10 bolt. So I'm gonna do a how-to series on building this 10 bolt. Uh, when I first started doing YouTube videos, I did a, a full build on my uh, 10 bolt that I built in my C10, but I was really green at doing the whole trying to film while you work on stuff thing. So I did miss some key parts of building the axle and getting it on film. So now that I got this axle in here, I'm really excited because those, those videos are some of my, my best performing videos. Uh, so I'm gonna do, use uh, this opportunity to, uh, to do a new and improved version and try to get more uh, information out there and, and a better uh, amount of information so that uh, people can can learn to build these axles themselves. So I'm going to be breaking it down. Uh, today I'm going to be doing the full uh, tear down of this axle. And when I get done with it, it's going to be a bare housing and clean axle tubes. So the next step will be to uh, narrow the axle, um, weld the uh, housing, and then I can uh, build, build the uh, ring, install the ring and pinion, install the C-clip eliminator kit, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, with all that out of the way, let's get to turning some wrenches. So one of the upgrades that Chandler did to this axle was to upgrade the braking system um, to a set of uh, calipers and rotors for an 03 uh, Chevy Tahoe. It's a nice upgrade over the factory uh, braking system on this truck. And he topped that off with some uh, EBC uh, drilled and slotted rotors and some uh, EBC uh, brake pads. As you can see, I removed the calipers and the brackets in one, in one setting. And I also did, did not break the brake lines loose uh, my theory was that I was going to just, just remove it all as a unit. Um, afterwards, um, I, I realized that it's just too cumbersome trying to carry everything everything without trying to take the brake lines apart. Um, so when I put it back together, I may actually break the brake lines apart. Um, but 
I, I was just trying to get everything out of the way so I could get this axle torn down. <laughs> Yum, glittery gear oil. Not something you'd want to find when you pull the drain plug on an axle. All right, so about two years ago, Chandler installed the gears and this True Track differential. Um, it's, it was his first time ever installing gears, and he had trouble getting the gears uh, to set up and wasn't really happy with the way they set up. And uh, ever since then, he's, he said he has heard a slight whining sound and uh, just wasn't real confident in how, in, in, in how they were set up and stuff. Well, I checked it when I pulled the, the uh, field plug out. There's a lot of metal shavings in the, in the uh, fluid when it come out. And I just checked the backlash and it's right at 10,000th backlash, which is, it's, it's more than what I would like to like it to have on, on the gears. Uh, so I know that the, know that these, these gears, the, I could see the contact pattern, um, etched into the, uh, the gear face on them and they're not, they're not in good shape. So that's part, part of what we're going to do was going to replace these gears with, with some fresh gears and get a good setup on them. And, uh, since I'm doing it, doing this for Chandler and he's going, uh, He's going to work really hard trying to trying to uh, learn what I know about doing gears. I'm not the best at doing gears, but I've done it before and I have, have some experience and stuff. And I love love going to show people. That's why I'm trying to show y'all what, what I'm doing. So I'm about to bust this uh, um, true track apart to get these C-clips removed. I'm going to snatch the axle shafts out of here, pull the carrier out, and uh, keep this tear down going. Alrighty, so first step is to remove the snap ring and the outside cover from the true track so you can get down into where the C clips are. Next, I used a magnet to remove the center spacer uh, that goes between the axle shafts. Uh, this locates the shafts so they can't slide in, uh, which would allow the C-clips to fall out. Once I remove it, uh, you can slide the axle shafts in, and then using a magnet, I just fished the uh, C-clips out, and then you're able to slide the axle shafts out of the housing. Next up is to remove the differential carrier caps. Um, make sure that before you remove them, you uh, mark them with uh, either stamp uh, numbers or letters or something so that you know which side they're on and what their orientation is to the housing because they must go back on as they came off. These were already marked, so I just pulled them out. When you remove the carrier from the housing, be careful because there is uh, shims and outer bearing races on either side of the carrier. Um, so make sure you catch those and uh, keep the shims on the side that they came, af came off of because that can be a reference for when the axle goes back together. I put my carrier caps back in place and uh, just, just snugged up the bolts because it's gonna be a little bit before I actually um, reinstall gears into this axle. I have some other work to do to it uh, and I didn't want anything to happen to the carrier caps. So the safest place for them to be is bolted into the housing.
Yeah, don't, don't lose those. Hang on to them. <laughs> they look okay, though. Yeah, well, they look fine. Man, oh man. All right, y'all, so I gotta give y'all a little short story about why there was setup bearings in this rear end after it drove down the road. Um, while we were tearing it apart, when I pulled the pinion out and grabbed the, uh, the pinion bearing to see, what, see how it looked, and it slid off in my hands, um, Chandler afterwards, after I checked it all, all out, and I told him, I was like, uh, that's not supposed to be a setup bearing on there, that's supposed to be the press on bearing. Chandler goes, uh, well, you see what had happened was, um, he actually installed this gear at the Mercedes dealership where he works at after hours on a Saturday. And after going through and having so much trouble setting this rear end up, trying to, trying to figure out because it's his first rear end to build, and uh, he, you know, take it apart, put it back together, take it apart, put it back together. He went to set up the final, final setup and had, the the pattern wasn't quite where he wanted it to be, so he went to pull the main bearing, the, the uh, correct bearing off, and apparently it blowed up in the bearing puller. So here he is with his pickup truck blowed apart in a Mercedes dealership on a Saturday evening, and it has to be gone. And you're not going to just go pick up some bearings in Mississippi on a Saturday night. So uh, he just said, well, we're gonna throw the setup bearing in it, get it close and uh, just send it. And uh, that's what he did. And it immediately started howling. And he actually had asked me and I didn't know, cause I was, I was in the middle of recovering from hernia surgery. So I wasn't quite able to, you know, be out and do anything. He actually asked me, hey, my rear end, I just built it, it's howling can I change anything? And I was like, well, if it's already howling, it's probably already messed the gears up. I wouldn't recommend trying to fool with it. You may just make it worse. So if it's not howling terribly, just run it. And when, when you know, I get healed up, we'll put some new gears in it. So that's what we're doing now. It's been a, take, it's taken a little while to get done, but uh, I just had to explain that because I was quite surprised when I, the pinion bearing fell off of my hand. So anyways, back to the video. Next up is to pull the uh, pinion seal out and be careful because there is an outer pinion bearing uh, right behind it that will come out after your foot if you don't catch it. Now we finally have a bare uh, 8.6 10 volt housing sitting here on the stands and a table slam full of parts that I have to uh, find a place to put them so I can have my table back. Next up is to get some critical measurements so I can uh, reuse those to reinstall the uh, spring perches. Um, because I'm about to stick a grinder to every bracket on the axle tubes.
All righty. Well, I got this axle torn down. Uh, I wanted to make sure, wanted to get it torn down this weekend uh, so we could check to see if the axle gears were actually reusable. They're not, so the gears uh, will be uh, ordered Monday. Uh, he has already ordered the axle shafts, the, the shorter axle shafts with the C-clip eliminators. So uh, those are on the way. The gears will be on the way shortly. Um, so I got more cleaning up on this axle to do, but I'm gonna clean it up, spot clean it as I go along. Um, so when the parts get in, the gears and the axle shafts, then I can finish up the uh, build of this axle. Um, next, I'm gonna tackle, next project on the axle I'm gonna tackle is actually narrowing the axle tubes. And then I wanna weld the, uh, the tubes to the housing. And once I get all that kind of work done, uh, then I'll install and set up the ring and pinion. And uh, we'll get this axle slung under the truck and uh, start uh, lining up all the brackets for the uh, loose spring purchase, the axle, the, uh, the, the loose spring purchase, the sway bar mounts, the shock mounts, get all that stuff uh, lined up and uh, in its final position welded in and uh, have this axle done. So uh, hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure you hit like, subscribe and keep on coming back here so you can see the rest of this axle build right here at Alley Cat Customs.